Today I want to share with you how to make turmeric tea to boost your immune system and ward off colds and flu. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, turmeric tea is very easy to make and the basic recipe is only four ingredients, five if you count water. But the nice thing about turmeric tea that really has in common with so many of these healing herbal spice mixtures is that you can customize this to add additional herbs and spices to not only improve the nutritional and healing benefits, but to also change the flavors. Now you don't need to write anything down because I'll put a link in the description below. You'll see the word recipe and just click on the link next to that and that'll take you over to my website where you can read the recipe online or print it out and I'll have the basic recipe plus all the possible customizations that I recommend. And also in the description below and the pinned comment, because I know for some of you that's a little easier to find, I will have timestamps that'll walk you through the basic recipe and then timestamps where I talk about the different ways you can customize your turmeric tea. So first I want to talk about the benefits of turmeric, but if you already know that and you just want to jump ahead and get ready to make the tea, then be sure to check the timestamps. Now, why is there so much talk about turmeric being so beneficial for us, so healing, so medicinal, so on and so forth? Well, we're very fortunate that over the years, scientists have studied turmeric and they have found so many wonderful healing and medicinal properties that are contained in this very simple root. And if you're not familiar with fresh turmeric, this is what it looks like. It's just a whole piece, very similar in many ways if you're familiar with fresh ginger. Turmeric is very similar. It's got that sort of papery type skin, similar to ginger, and you can either peel this and just use like a spoon, or I find a serrated grapefruit spoon look, works very well, just the same way I would peel ginger. And then when you slice this open, it's orange instead of the pale whitish or pale, pale yellow that ginger is. Now I know when I've talked about turmeric before, some of you have told me that finding fresh turmeric can be difficult for you. And I understand that completely, but you don't need to worry because you can always use the ground turmeric in any of the recipes where I talk about using turmeric, whether it's the fresh or the ground, either will work. And today when we make the tea, I'm going to use the ground turmeric because I know most of you can find this. This is very easy generally to find in your grocery store in the spice aisle. Now in the blog post where the recipe is uh, that corresponds with this video, I'll have a lot of link to different scientific articles, if that's the type of thing that you really enjoy reading, that talks in detail about how scientists studied turmeric and what they found. But just to quickly summarize, basically turmeric is a wonderful antioxidant. And what does that mean, antioxidant? It basically fights oxidation in our body. And oxidation is something that's damaging. It's often something you may have heard the term free radicals. And these free radicals are sort of going around ravaging our body and antioxidants put the brakes on them. And so the more antioxidants that we eat, you hear in fresh fruits and vegetables and green tea and coffee and things like this, the better off we are. Scientists tell us the healthier we'll be, the more we incorporate antioxidants into our diet. And specifically, the ingredient that scientists tend to study that's in turmeric is something called curcumin. And I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it's curcumin that is credited with a lot of these health benefits, with a lot of these medicinal properties. And so scientists have found that, that this curcumin and other compounds that are in turmeric, but not as strong or as in great, great, that's the same proportion as the curcumin, which is sort of the leader of the group, so to speak. But what scientists have found is that this curcumin has all types of wonderful properties, anti-inflammatory, 
antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial. I mean, it's really in many ways a wonder spice. And specifically, when it comes to colds and flus, scientists have found that curcumin and all the other compounds that are in turmeric, when made into a tea, can be very soothing and healing when you have a cold or the flu, or it can actually boost your immune system to help you fend off colds and flu. Now, there is one drawback to all of this. Curcumin can be difficult for us to absorb, but there's a little trick. There's an ingredient, and I think it's Pepperine, something, it's pronounced something like that. But there's an ingredient in black peppercorns, in these whole black peppercorns, that contains this ingredient that helps our body absorb the curcumin and the other uh, compounds that are in turmeric. So whenever you're making a turmeric tea or even cooking with turmeric, it's always beneficial to add in some black pepper. Also, when it comes to cooking, turmeric being fat soluble benefits very well if in your cooking you include some high quality fat like a butter or a ghee. So there's nothing to keep you from when you make your turmeric tea, maybe having a little buttered toast on the side. Tea and toast, I think it's perfect when you're under the weather. But even when you don't have a cold or the flu, Drinking turmeric tea, as I mentioned earlier, can help boost your immune system. So you can never go wrong with enjoying a cup of turmeric tea. And scientists tell us that it's also good for brain health and heart health. It really, as I said earlier, it's kind of the wonder spice. So drinking turmeric tea on a regular basis is wonderful advice. Now today, I'm going to make two 12 ounce cups of turmeric tea, one for me and one for my husband. But you can make this in larger batches very easily. This doubles, triples, it quadruples very well. And once it's made, you can store the tea in your refrigerator and then warm it later when you're ready to enjoy it. Or you can even enjoy it cold during the summer months. Alrighty, now let's make the tea. Well, the first thing that you're gonna need is three cups of water, and this will yield us the two 12 ounce cups of turmeric tea. Next, you'll just wanna decide if you're gonna be using fresh turmeric or if you're gonna be using the ground dried turmeric. If you're using the powdered turmeric, then you just want one teaspoon. If you're using the fresh turmeric, you're going to want about one tablespoon of freshly grated turmeric. And basically you could just try starting with maybe a little two inch piece that should yield you about a tablespoon of grated turmeric. Now for the black pepper, you can use either the whole peppercorns or you can use freshly ground black pepper. And you wanna use freshly ground black pepper if you can, because once, ground, uh, once the whole peppercorns are ground, they tend to, to lose a little bit of their uh, beneficial properties. Uh, so uh, if you do have a little pepper grinder, great, or you can just go ahead and use the whole peppercorns. Uh, if you're gonna use whole peppercorns, you're gonna want 16. If you're going to use the freshly ground black pepper, you're gonna want about a half a teaspoon of the freshly ground black pepper. Uh, but if you can use the whole peppercorns, I find these work a little better because it's a little easier when you go to strain your tea. Uh, if you, unless your mesh strainer is really, really fine, sometimes the uh, freshly ground black pepper will uh, go through your strainer and it'll be in your tea. Now, if you don't mind that, it's not a big issue. Uh, but if you want to make it easier to strain, the whole peppercorns work great. Now, those are the two basic ingredients to make the tea. Next, what you're going to need, what you're gonna put in after you make the tea, is gonna be some honey to sweeten. Now, yes, if you don't want to uh, use honey, you can definitely leave it out and uh, just drink it as is, or you can use one of the natural uh, low car, locale, uh, sweeteners or locale, no cal sweeteners uh, like a stevia to sweeten it, that's certainly fine to do. But if you're already fighting a cold or fighting the flu, you may find a little bit of honey in there can be very soothing, especially to uh, your 
airways, your, your throat, and your, your bronchial passages. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. But if you can't take any sweetener, then yes, definitely you can use one of the low-cal or no-cal sweeteners. Next, we're going to add in some lemon juice. And this is, again, once we've already made the tea and we've taken it off the heat. And the reason is we don't want to put the lemon juice into the tea when it's simmering because the vitamin C is susceptible to the heat. And not only can you put in the juice of the lemon, you're going to want the juice of one whole lemon and you're going to divide the juice uh, between the two cups of the two 12 ounce cups of turmeric tea. Now, if you're not using any sweetener, yes, you can cut back on the amount of lemon that you add. And can you leave it out? Yes. However, it is nice because the lemon juice is very high in vitamin C and you can even take a little bit of the rind and you can just kind of do a little twist like that to release some of the essential oils. I'll show you when we get to that part. Uh, if you uh, want to add a little bit of that, uh, the essential oils in, which are also uh, very beneficial and very rich in antioxidants uh, for us. Uh, but again, you don't want to put the zest into, uh, when you're actually simmering the uh, turmeric and the black pepper. And the reason is uh, the zest and the pith, all of this is very high in vitamin C and can be easily damaged by the heat. So these are the two ingredients. We're gonna start with the turmeric, the ground turmeric and the black pepper, and then we'll add the honey and the lemon next. Now let's take a minute to talk about some possible combinations where you can customize uh, your turmeric tea, maybe based on different nutrients you would like to add in, or maybe different symptoms you're having that you're hoping to comfort with herbs and spices. The first one I wanna talk about, which is really a good uh, spice to keep in your cabinet, and that's cardamom. And it kind of goes hand in hand with turmeric tea in many ways uh, because it's very, uh, you know, turmeric tea is originally a recipe that has been developed in India along with uh, the turmeric golden milk, which you may be familiar with. I showed you how to make that a while back. And I show you how to make a golden turmeric mix, which you can just keep handy in your pantry. And then whenever you need uh, to make up a batch, you can just add it, the powdered mixture that I show you how to make right into your milk and boom, your golden milk is done. Uh, so I'll be sure to link to that in the iCards and in the description below. Uh, but uh, because that's just wonderful too, if, if you're really feeling under the weather. I used to give that to my son and he'd say, the milk is yellow. You know, but it's actually, it's very healing. It's, and uh, you can make it with things uh, that are non-dairy as well. So if milk doesn't agree with you, yes, you can use coconut milk or things like that. But in any event, uh, I, I use some cardamom in there. So, but uh, talking about cardamom, it's very good for digestion. Now, if you feel the turmeric may be a little hard on your stomach, that's why I highly recommend turmeric tea as opposed to taking turmeric pills because uh, turmeric can sometimes be a little strong for some people. But adding in a little cardamom, this is ground cardamom here, and these are cardamom pods, which you can just crack and put right into your mixture. Either or will work. But as I said, wonderful for digestion. And so it can kind of help with this whole uh, idea of taking turmeric in a tea form. But it also helps with things like nausea and different symptoms that can accompany when you have a cold or the flu. And so that can be very healing, very soothing, and kind of help tamp down uh, the feeling of nausea. And if you've never had cardamom, I love it. It has a wonderful, almost like a lemony kind of citrusy smell. And uh, it, it is very soothing and it's very tasty. Uh, so that's definitely something to think about. Now, if you have a cough accompanied with your cold and or the flu, you may want to consider adding some thyme. And this is just some ground thyme, just dried thyme. Thyme contains an ingredient, and I believe it's pronounced thymol, <laughs> uh, but uh, it is very soothing to the bronchial passages. And so if you have a cough 
Uh, time can help soothe that. I even shared with you, if you've been with me a while, you may remember I showed you how to make a cough medicine, uh, you know, sort of a home remedy cough medicine using thyme. And it works really well. So you could add a little bit of dried thyme uh, to your uh, <laughs> your saucepan when you're simmering the turmeric and the black pepper together. The same with the cardamom. You would add these right in at that stage where you are simmering them on the stove. And I'll have all these directions in the written recipe with all these variations, so don't worry, and how much to use and so on and so forth. Next, if you're feeling really congested in your nasal passages and in your, as my mother would say, the flanges, you know, the airways uh, leading to your lungs, some red pepper can work great. And you can just use the crushed red pepper or I've just here, I've got some ground cayenne. Either any of this, any kind of hot pepper that you like, whether it's the flakes or in the ground form will work great. And a little bit of that, will really open up your airways and open up your flanges and should have you breathing a little better for a while. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Also something that I really like to add uh, to turmeric tea. And then again, all of these you would be adding in at the simmering stage on the stove. The only two you really need to worry about is your honey and uh, you know, especially if you're using raw honey and your citrus. And again, with the citrus, I'm going with lemon. You could use lime, you could use orange, you could use grapefruit, really whatever you have uh, in your refrigerator will work great. They're all very, all the citruses are very high in vitamin C. But one of the things that I really like to add is either some fresh ginger or some ground ginger. And either, again, either will work. And they are wonderful. Ginger, you know, in many ways like turmeric, is a wonderful spice. It's one of these that really is a catch-all. It's anti-inflammatory, you know, antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial, you know, it's got a little bit of everything <laughs> in it to help you. Also, it's a little spicy. So much like the red pepper flakes and uh, the ground, in my case, I have the cayenne, it can help you breathe a little better. And it's not as strong as your spicy peppers. Uh, you know, it does have, you know, some spice to it, but it can be a little more gentle if you're not used to really uh, using uh, stronger spices in your food, uh, and in this case, our tea. Uh, so ginger can be a great place to start. Next, I want to talk about cinnamon. Now, cinnamon, real cinnamon, Ceylon cinnamon, has a lot of healing properties. Also, in many ways, uh, what, once you've got your ginger, your turmeric, and some cinnamon, you're really covered. And the nice thing about cinnamon, especially if you're not going to be using any honey, is that it adds a nice flavor and almost a little bit of sweetness. And you can use the ground cinnamon, or if you want, you can use cinnamon sticks and you can just break them up again. These are all going to be simmering uh, with your turmeric and your black pepper. Now, speaking of cinnamon, I just want to clarify the difference between cassia and Ceylon cinnamon. They're very similar in flavor. They look similar, but if you notice, the actual Ceylon cinnamon is lighter in color and the cassia almost has a little reddish brownish tinge to it. And this is going to break very easily and this is going to be a little harder to break. And But as I said, taste-wise, they're very similar. Nutritionally, they're a little different. And cassia does have benefits, as does cinnamon, and often a lot of what you'll see sold at the grocery store will actually be uh, ground from cassia. But what I want to mention about cassia, if you were going to be using this as your cinnamon every day, you may want to think about getting the Ceylon cinnamon instead, only because there have been some studies, and I'll put links to this, you know, as I said in the blog post so you can read more about it, but there have been some medical studies that have found that cassia can be a little hard on the liver and or maybe the kidneys. So if it's something that you're gonna use every single day, and, and if you already had liver or kidney problems, you know, you may wanna be a little careful uh, with the cassia. So that's something definitely that you'll wanna investigate. Alrighty, well now we'll get ready 
to make our tea. And as I said, we're going to just do the very basic version today so that you can see how this is made and then you can customize it any way you want. And these are just ways that I customize it and suggestions that I'm giving. You can do all sorts of things. Really, it's a matter of herbs and spices that you like or that you're familiar with. And if you're very new to using herbs and spices, I highly recommend this book. It's called Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs, Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. I love this book. And if any of you know Heidi over at Rain Country Homestead, she actually introduced me to Rosemary Gladstar's books. And I am so glad she did because that book, I mean, it's a beginner's guide, but whether you're a beginner or you're very familiar, uh, with herbs and their medicinal properties. You'll love this book. She's got re she has recipes and so much information and she walks you through all the different herbs and all of their medicinal properties and then she shares a recipe or two on how to make something using those herbs. So I highly recommend that. But in any event, alrighty, so here we go. We're going to put our three cups of water into our saucepan and a small saucepan it works great then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a teaspoon of our ground turmeric and as i said we're going to use the ground turmeric but you can definitely use the fresh turmeric as well and it works well to just help kind of release all of its properties uh, by grating it but if you don't have the ability uh, to grate the turmeric you can just slice it very thin as well Alrighty, let me just get my teaspoon here. I'm going to go ahead and dump that right down into our saucepan. Now, I want to mention a word about working with turmeric, whether it's the ground turmeric or fresh turmeric. Turmeric stains, and it stains like the Dickens, <laughs> I'm telling you. So be careful uh, when you're working with it. Uh, if you notice, I've got a lot of dark colors on. Um, and when you slice up the fresh turmeric, it may stain your hands a bit. It'll wash off and it'll wear off, you know, in a day. Uh, but if that type of thing bothers you, you'll definitely want to wear gloves. Alrighty, now I'm just going to count out 16 peppercorns. You don't really need to be that exact. I got four in there, but uh, now another two, six. Uh, but basically, that's basically the amount that you're looking for. I'm going to take this over to my stove. I'm going to bring it up to a boil. Then we're going to turn it down to low and I'm going to cover it because I want to prevent evaporation and we're going to let it simmer for 10 minutes. Well, while the tea is simmering over on the stove, I want to get my cup ready with the lemon and the honey. I've got an organic lemon here, but if you don't, don't worry. You can still use the peel. Uh, just give it a good washing. Now you don't have to do this, but what I'm going to do is just take off a little bit of the zest here and then I'm going to just twizzle this right into my glass here. And you'll notice you'll, you'll like doing this because when you squeeze the pith, it releases the essential oils uh, from the lemon peel and it smells wonderful. I mean, it smells on my fingers and everything. And basically what I've done here in taking uh, the peel off, I have only a tiny little bit of the pith there. You want to get as little pith as possible. Although the pith is nutritious, in this tea it can make it a little bitter. But I'll go ahead and put that right in there like that. Next I'm going to cut this lemon in half and then what I'm going to do is squeeze this just using a little mesh strainer here to catch all the pits. I'm going to squeeze in half of the juice or half I'm going to use half of a lemon to to squeeze this juice in for that I'll have for my tea. Now, if you find a he, the juice from half a lemon, lemon to be a little too much, of course you can go with less. Next, I'm going to add in a teaspoon of honey. And this is honey my husband's uh, cousin gives to us. I'm going to just put in a teaspoon right into my glass and see if I can do this neatly. But yeah, he raises bees. <laughs> And he gives us some of the honey, which is wonderful. And a pourable honey works very well here. But if you have one of those sort of thick creamed honeys, you can certainly use that because the warmth of the turmeric tea will help dissolve it. But what I like to do is simply mix the lemon juice 
and the tea and the tea and mix the lemon juice and the honey together. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you can't take any kind of sweetener, uh, you can definitely leave the honey out. Um, but if you want to give it some sweetness, you can certainly use one of the low-cal, uh, no-cal sweeteners like stevia. Now I brought this over to my stove. I brought it up to a boil. Once it came up to a boil, I immediately turned it down to low, the lowest setting that you have on your stove. I put the lid on and let it simmer for 10 minutes. Now I've removed the lid. And I've just let it cool just a few minutes uh, because I don't want to put the piping hot uh, tea into my glass with the lemon juice and the honey because I don't want to damage either of them. So you just want to let it cool down a little bit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and ladle some of this into the glass and we'll take a taste. Now I want to mention if you've never had turmeric, uh, if you've never had a turmeric tea or maybe a turmeric golden milk, it's got some, somewhat of an earthy, I would say, flavor to it. It's not it's not strong like uh, coriander or cumin. It's just a, a little earthy, but, but pleasant. But I think that in order to offset some of that earthy flavor is why when you see the golden milk or the golden milk teas, or, the, or in this case, just the straight turmeric tea, people often will add a little bit of uh, lemon juice, or lime juice, or you know, one of the citrus juices, and maybe a little bit of sweetener, uh, just to sort of offset that more uh, earthy flavor. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can always use one of the cinnamon sticks as a little twizzle stick to stir this all around and make sure that lemon juice and honey is well distributed. And it'll also impart a little bit of flavor. Alrighty, well, let's give this a taste. Mmm. Oh, that's so delicious and perfect for every day, but also especially comforting if you have a cold or a flu. Now, if you'd like more recipes for immune boosting foods and lots of other home remedies, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a whole playlist where I show you how to make elderberry syrup and a super mineral broth and all sorts of wonderful things. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.